Happy New Year! I'm back! So I want to share with you today three very simple appetizers that you can prepare for your next cocktail party. Let's just stop talking and get right into it. Before we get started with our food prep, let's get this oven heated to 350. So today we're going to be making three different types of crostini appetizers. And a crostini starts with a base and that base is French bread. Now I can buy a loaf of French bread at my local grocery store and I'm sure you can too and it usually doesn't come sliced but if you ask the baker which I did and I usually do to slice it they have a machine that'll slice it really fast and it'll give you equal sizes which is what you want when you're serving appetizers because you want everything to be uniform I'm going to make four of each of my appetizers today so I need a total of 12 slices of bread. I'm just going to take my slices and put them on this baking sheet and I'm going to get ready to prep them to go in the oven. Now I've melted some butter in this little dish and I have my brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of the butter. You don't want to saturate it but I'm just going to brush a little bit of the butter on the top of each of my slices of bread. Now you can also use olive oil. I used to use olive oil and I still do from time to time, but I find that I like the flavor of the butter just a little bit better. So next I'm going to take a little bit of pepper and just sprinkle it lightly on each slice of the bread. I'm also going to do the same thing with some salt. Okay, let's pop these in the oven for about 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes between 5 and 10 minutes. It depends on how toasted you want your bread. The first crostini I'm going to show you is my salmon crostini. So you just need some smoked salmon, whatever brand you use. I use the brand from Sam's Club. It's really delicious and I can get a small pack. I'm also going to use cucumber and Philadelphia cream cheese, but this is the garden vegetable flavor. You can use whatever cream cheese you like. It's fine, I just like some with a little flavor. I'm also gonna use a little fresh dill and honey mustard dressing. Okay, so everything is prepped to start my salmon crostini. I have my salmon, my cucumber slice, and I've taken my bread out of the oven. So my first topping is the cheese. I'm gonna put a nice portion of cheese on top of the bread, and this kind of helps hold everything in place. Next, I'm gonna add a slice of the cucumber. Now you can add salt and pepper to the cucumber at this point if you'd like, but I already put some on the bread, and the salmon is a little salty, so that's quite enough salt for me. And then I add my piece of salmon. And then I have just a little spoonful of the dressing that I add right on top. And then to garnish it, I'm just gonna top it with a little piece of the dill. And that's it. Look how easy that is, you guys. And it's really not that expensive. So that's it for my salmon crostini. I'm gonna finish these up and then we're gonna move on to the next one. Now this is optional, but sometimes I do like to squeeze just a little bit of lemon on top of my salmon. For our second appetizer today, we're gonna make mushroom crostini, and I just have some Baby Bella mushroom, some goat cheese that I have at room temperature, I have a little fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, I've chopped some shallots, and I've diced some garlic. I also shredded some fresh Parmesan, and I have some chives for a garnish. It's time to start prepping my mushroom for the crostini. So I had some butter left over that I used on the bread before I put it in the oven. I'm going to put that into a small skillet. Because I'm just making 
about four crostini. I don't need a lot. So I'm adding that butter with a little bit of olive oil. And then we're going to add our herbs. Now I'm just using a sprig of thyme and a little bit of rosemary because I want those flavors to really soak into that butter and it's gonna give the mushrooms the best flavor and aroma. Now I'm going to stir this gently because I don't want the thyme and the rosemary to break off of the stalk. I just want the flavor. I really don't want the pieces of the rosemary and thyme in there. So now I'm gonna just add my shallots and add my garlic. Now you can add as much or as little as you want. If you love garlic, then just go for it. But this is plenty for me. Okay, we've got the butter and herbs and everything bubbling up pretty good here. So I'm gonna add my mushroom. Now, normally when I make this dish, I add an assortment of mushroom. I love shiitake and cremini, but all I had in the house today were these baby bellas, but this will be just fine. I love Bella mushrooms, the big ones, the little ones, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna take my thyme and my rosemary out. I think it's infused the flavors that I want. And I'm just going to give this a good stir, give it a little bit of pepper or a lot of pepper because I do love pepper and a little bit of salt just for some additional flavor. And I'm gonna give it a good stir and then put a top on it and let it simmer and start prepping my bread. My goat cheese is nice and soft. I've had it sitting out for a while. So we're just gonna top the bread with the goat cheese, just like we did with the salmon crostini. Goat cheese is so good. I love it, I love it, I love it. I also love it in salads. I think that's when I really became familiar with goat cheese was in salads, but we're gonna top these with our goat cheese. Our next topping is our mushrooms. It's really the star of the show. This mushroom is so delicious, you guys. I'll tell you what, it will be really, really good on top of a steak. Now that sounds good to me. Oh, it will be so good like on a steak with some crumbled blue cheese and these sauteed mushrooms. Oh, oh my God, I know what's for dinner one day this week. Anyway, I'm just gonna put my mushroom on top and then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that Parmesan that I grated. And then we're just gonna take our little chives and put them on top. And that's really it for my mushroom crostini. This is so easy, you guys. Anybody can do this and it really only takes a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish prepping these and then on to the next. Now, I don't know anybody who doesn't love a good BLT, except for people who maybe don't eat pork, but you can always substitute the bacon for turkey bacon. So let's get started on this one, it's so easy. I'm gonna pop my bacon in the oven on 400 degrees and let it cook until it's nice and crisp. mix my lettuce into the bowl with my mayonnaise. I already started doing this and then I realized I had more mayonnaise than I anticipated. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more lettuce. Now I bought this lettuce already shredded in a bag but I want it smaller so I'm just giving it a good chop and then I'm gonna pop it in the bowl with my mayonnaise and this is gonna be my binding ingredient on my crostini. So when my pickles are all gone, I keep the juice and I slice cucumbers and I put it in the juice. So I need something to garnish my BLT. I'm gonna slice a little bit of this cucumber from my pickle jar and put it on top. It's gonna be really pretty and delicious. And we are ready to assemble. So first I'm gonna add that 
lettuce mayonnaise mixture. That's gonna bind to the bread and I give my bacon a little push and it'll hold it in place. And then I add just a little bit more, not as much as I put on the bread, just a little bit so that the tomatoes have something to hold on to. If you just put the tomatoes on top without a little bit of something to hold it down, when you hold it in your hand and you go to bite it, it can just all fall off. So I like to have something that it can just stick to a little bit. And then I take my little pickle slice and put it on top and we are all done. How about a quick cosmopolitan to go with our appetizers? We're gonna need some vodka, vodka of your choice, some triple sec, which is an orange liqueur, cranberry juice, ice, a shaker, you gotta shake up, shake up your martini and a martini glass. Okay, so we wanna load this shaker up with ice. Now, if you were serving a drink on ice, you wouldn't need this much ice, but we wanna get this martini nice and chilled. And once you add the liquor to the ice, it starts to melt immediately. So we're gonna add, I'm gonna add all of this vodka. It's about a half a cup. It's what was left in our freezer. So I'm just gonna use all of that. Uh, I'm gonna add probably about an ounce of the cranberry juice, but that depends on you. If you like a lot of cranberry juice or not so much, just use what you think you like, okay? It's really to your taste. I'm gonna add the orange liqueur. You don't need much of this. I just use a couple of dashes and that's pretty much it for my Cosmo. All I need to do now is give it a good shake. They say about 30 seconds you should shake it, but um, I guess that's up to you too, but I want mine nice and cold, so I'm giving it a good shake. Nobody likes a warm cocktail coming out to the table, okay? So, I think this one is ready. We've got it all poured in the glass, and then I'm just gonna top it off with a garnish of a lemon twist. There you go, that's a Cosmopolitan, cheers. And there you have it. Our crostinis are complete. I have them plated on this cute little three-tier tray that I've had forever. And you can find them just about anywhere. Um, I think I picked this one up at Pier 1, but they're pretty inexpensive and they make a nice statement on the table. So that's it, you guys. These are my three crostinis. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest at Simply Ormandy. Ciao!